Hi guys and girls, and um, it's another sunny day here in Mississauga, and the temperature of the pond is 20.1. It's, it's the second day in a row that the temperature has reached um, 20 degrees. Yesterday went up to uh, 20.3, I believe. So this morning, um, well, it's almost one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, this morning, the temperature uh, started out at 19.7 and it's currently 20.1. It should reach close to 21 degrees um, by uh, early evening. And fish are looking good and plants inside my cavern those are vines um, they're growing pretty fast so what I'm showing you guys here is uh, my records of um, the outside temperatures in the morning and at night and also the uh, water temp in the pond in the morning and in the afternoon and um, I black these out so it doesn't confuse you um, and it shows the uh, daily temperature swings in the pond and also the daily temperature swings outside um, in the uh, the outside columns here so, for example, uh, I've broken the, uh, the dates here and the month by, um, by two weeks. So, the first two weeks of January, first, second two weeks of January, uh, first two weeks of February, second two weeks of February, etc. And I recorded um, what the min what the minimum minimum temperature is during that day and the maximum temperature of that day, and also with the pond water temperature, the uh, minimum temperature and the maximum temperature, and 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 the and the daily swing up. For example, in the morning. That's 14, and in the afternoon is 14.4. So the pond temperature swing up of 0.4, and also when it swings down in the morning from night from um, evening uh, the day before to the morning after. For example, it was 14.4 in the evening that night, and then in the morning it's 14.3. And that's a swing down of 0.1 degrees Celsius. I do the same thing with the with the temperature outside. And then I um, take the average temperatures of the first two weeks, for example, the first two weeks of January, the average temperature was 14.6 and the average temperature in the evening is 14.7. I also take the average of the daily swing up and swing down. So in the first two weeks of uh, January, the average swing down is 0.2 degrees and the average swing up is 0.1 degrees Celsius. I do the same thing with the temperatures outside. And as you can see, uh, I will show you that as the temperature warms up in the spring, um, there'll be a uh, increase in the average of temperature swings. Uh, both 
outside and inside. So the first two weeks of January, it was point 1.2, point sorry, point 0.2, point 0.1, and second two weeks of January, it was point 0.2, Point two, first two weeks of February is point two, point two, still uh, still pretty stable um, in the winter time. Second two weeks of February is point. 0.1.2 so there's more an increase in temperature there's more uh, of a swing up first two weeks of March weather's getting warmer and so is the temperature swings 0.4 and 0.5 you can tell this the, the same things happening outside Second two weeks of March, point three and point four. First two weeks of April, point four and point four. And uh, I hope you didn't hear that, it's my stomach rumbling. Almost time for lunch, and the first, the second two weeks, uh, second two weeks of April, point point, uh, point four and point four. Take note here that uh, on April twenty third, we went from minus one all the way to 21 degrees outside that is a temperature temperature swing outside of 22 degrees and inside the pond it uh, started in the morning at 17.6 and ended off at 18.7 that's a 1.1 degree swing that's a fair bit relatively And here we are in May, which is currently um, so far the average of temperature swing up and swing down is uh, 0.6 degrees swing up and Point four degrees swing down and yesterday like I said the first time the pond reached 20.3 degrees it's still cold in the morning six degrees but then that's uh, um, yesterday there was a swing up of 1.2 degrees and um, that's a fair bit. I've had in the past had um, uh, temperature swings of way more than that when, um, especially in the summertime, when um, pond was um, mostly uncovered. Uh, for example. This is um, my record from 2016. Uh, my temperature um, record ke keeping is not as accurate, but I was able to, to get some data from it. See, some of the fields are missing here. So for example, in July, um, the first two weeks of July, the pond, um, started at 19 degrees and ended up at 24, uh, 24 degrees 
that's a temperature temperature swing of four degrees here a temperature swing of five four three four five and last year in july that's in 2020 This is July. Again, some data is missing. Um, but the, I have a temperature swing up of only 1.3 degrees and uh, the pond was open at that time. Um, and 50% uh, covered, uh, mainly because of the bridge I uh, built last year and also uh, partly styrofoam covered and also I have um, now my um, grapevines that's growing uh, leaves above the um, above the pond so what is um, A comfortable or safe or a stress free a stress free temperature swing in the pond and uh, that's what I'm asking today um, some people say two degrees is the max some people say it's three. Uh, but I think the lower the swings, swings the better. And um, I have this article, and um, there's not too many research on it, especially for a hobbyist. Um, and and this is the article here. And it's called the uh, stress response to daily temperature fluctuations in common carp. And um, started out saying that, uh, you know, normal um, carp. Um, the study uh, was done in Lake Biwa. In Japan and they're saying um, carp like stable um, water uh, temperatures usually they go to deeper ends when where there's a stable and more comfortable uh, water temperatures less less fluctuations um, but they only go to the uh, uh, what they call um, the shallow ends or literal uh, areas of um, a natural pond um, where there's a lot of uh, plant life there's more food and they only go there um, when um, the benefits outweigh the disadvantages such as you know looking for food um, and in those and in that pond uh, where uh, the where the pond uh, depth is only about uh, a meter and a half and mo and less there's usually a three or four degrees temperature swings and they say that could be stressful and they did this um, uh, experiment where they put little koi in jars and tested the cortisol levels that's coming out of their uh, gills and um, in the, into the water and cortisol many people know know 
is that is, um, determines how much stress the koi is experiencing the higher the cortisol level in their bloodstream or in the water the higher the stress levels and um, what they find here that a temperature swing of points a uh, temperature increase of 0.6 celsius per hour over a five hour period induced a lot of cortisol release in 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 the experiment that is about three degrees celsius over a five hour period so the study has its limits um and it says so uh, in it uh, in the papers and um i think too that uh it's got limits because they only uh, use small coys. Um, but the rest of the article uh, has some pretty good points um, This that could be pretty useful. Um, first, uh, it says fish behavior responses to select. Fish use behavioral responses to select optimal temperatures and simultaneously avoid areas that are suboptimal and water temperature has a significant effect on growth, metabolic, and immune function in uh, fish. Uh, another point is cortisol, the primary corticosteroid in Tilios uh, fishes, is widely used as an indicator of the primary physiological uh, response as it is secreted in a response to a wide variety of acute and chronic stressors. Um, the period from, this is pretty important, um, the period from spring to early summer is also associated with an increase in prevalence of disease, for example, uh, KHV. A number of um, studies have examined the stress response of crowding, um, tag insertion, nitrate exposure, confinement, and cold shock in common carp. However, little is known about the effects of daily temperature fluctuations in this species. Hence, um, they did the study. Um, and as I, as I said, there's not too many studies that can be found. Uh, another is a rapid increase in cortisol have a significant effect on immune function of fish. Thus, the stress is often associated with an increase in susceptibility of fish to pathogens. Um, so they say there's a lot more um, disease uh, issues, uh, mainly parasites, in the spring. Uh, because as because they say that the immune of fish uh, lags behind um, the growth of um, uh, pathological bacteria and uh, parasites, they grow faster um, than um, the immune function of fish. But um, sometimes you wonder whether uh, temperature uh, swings during the the um, spring uh, plays uh, a pretty major factor in um, the disease process in the springtime. And um, and I've experienced this like in twenty sixteen when there was a lot of temperature swings. Um, I've had a lot of skin problems, uh, inf infection of the scales, for example. I've had uh, koi isolating and flashing, especially um, when my koi would, uh, after they eat, would like isolate 
uh, himself. That's Kobe. And um, I've seen white films on the skin. It could be ex could be um, could be an increase in um, mucus. Could be related to costia. Could be flukes. And I've had experience of um, I've got shimmies at that time. Uh, but note though other factors. Back then I was feeling way more. I was gung ho in um, and in really putting growth to this fish. So the water quality wasn't as good, and um, I wasn't uh, as experienced as I am at the moment. So what we're doing today is that we're gonna decommission this little heater that I have in here that heats up my uh, trickle in water it's a 200 watt uh, heater that warms up the tubing inside here that feeds my trickle in and um, it's getting it's getting hot in the basement um, with this on it's been it's, it's been going on for uh, about two months now um, what we're, what we're gonna do is um, install that inside um, the pond cover um, and only turn it on at night so that I don't have um, the temperature dip at night now I need a separate plug for that heater um, and I can't really plug it into my uh, regular outlet that supplies the electricity for all my pumps because I think it's in the brink of um, um, uh, tripping the fuse and I don't want uh, any electrical failure so I'm gonna get another cord from inside the basement That plugs it plugs into my basement. It's another outlet. So I'm gonna get this um, power supply from the basement here. It's the same plug. That. Uh, powers my aerator so if anything happens to the uh, power supply in the pond um, my aeration would still work like if the it's in a separate fuse as my um, as a separate separate fuse from um, the plug that powers the pumps uh, in the pond so I'm just gonna pull that through. Here we go. So I just unplugged this heater. And without this, the hole is still being heated by the furnace. See this pipe here? The furnace blows hot air through it to heat up the hose a little bit so that uh, the trickle in water uh, gets heated even just a little bit. <clears throat> so next is um, finding a location for my heater. So I'm gonna have to secure this somewhere. 
And what I think I'm gonna do is wire it, attach it to the uh, frame here, so that um, there's no possibility of it ending up in the pond and uh, electrocuting the koi. So what I got here are these like chicken wires. I'm gonna put it in there. Should be pretty sturdy. And then we're gonna attach the other end to this frame. There you go. So that's not going anywhere near the pond. Even if raccoons ever get in here, they won't they won't be able to mess around with that and push it inside the pond into the water. Just have to get the plug under here where the rest of my wires go. And then just plug it in. Oops. I might need an extension. It's too short. There you go. Let's see if we have see if we have heat. Yep, nice and warm. Hair coming out. Can't wait to see how this works overnight. Just have to put it on a timer now. So I just plugged my timer. <clears throat> I'm gonna set it. Right now it's uh, 5 p.m. And I think I'm gonna set it for 12 hours from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. 8 a.m. is around the time the sun comes out anyways. I went over. 
8 a.m. So the heater will be on for 12 hours, so I'll, I'll save some energy because when the heater was in the barrel, it was going on 24-7. So as you can see, it's about 5 p.m. And uh, we've reached a uh, water temperature of 20.7. That is up one degree from 19.7 this morning. So typically with the um, temperature of uh, six degrees, when it comes morning, I'd have a temperature drop of about 0.4 to 0.6. So we'll see how this heater work, works um, inside the pond and only being on for 12 hours and only at night to see whether um, I'll have less of a temperature swing, especially during the uh, night time. So anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, um, please subscribe for uh, any updates. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.